everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel where we do painting tutorials. Today I have a very easy, beginner friendly, realistic mountain painting tutorial with watercolor pencils. I start by working on the background and I'm just very, very loosely coloring it with some pink, yellow, and this nice olive earthy green kind of tone. I'm using my Mondelez watercolor pencils, which do not have any names or pigments written on them. That's why I'm just going to use in the gears like uh, earthy green, fire green, pine green, that kind of stuff. And you can obviously use whatever colors you have in your set. You don't even need to use greens. You can do reds, you can use rust tones. You can use uh, earthy tones like sepia, like ochres, burnt umbers, etc. Completely up to you. I just want to explain this very basic, simple technique I use for painting realistic mountains. And once you get the grasp of it, you can replicate it in any painting. It makes life quite a bit simpler. Just to complete uh, my composition, sort of, I add some very faint mountains to the background, just some of my darker green, a bit of pink to neutralize it. And then I go over with, with my watercolor brush to blend it out and make it very faint. I want a very, very faint background. Now I've sketched out my big mountain, which is going to be the main focus of this painting. You can find a traceable down in the description below this video. I want the sunlight in my painting to be coming from the right side, so the left side is going to be in the shade. I outline my mountain with my darkest green and I use very little pressure on the side of the mountain that's going to have the sunlight, so in my case that's going to be the right side. And I fully cover the left side, the side that is in the shade, with my darkest green. I use more pressure towards the top and less towards the bottom because I want to layer a lot of mountains. So if I was to just color everything in one solid block of color, you would not be able to see the mountains that are going to be layered on top. Now at each little angle of the mountain edge, I draw a line with my dark green to make a little slope, to make a little valley. I do a very light layer with my brighter green color just so it's not straight white so it looks a bit more balanced rather than just having all white because we don't have white in the painting i already painted the sky then i take a bit of black and i just go around the mountain edges where the shadows start i do a very very light layer on the right side with some yellow ochre or at least what looks to be yellow ochre to me and very very lightly go over everything with a bit of pink to neutralize the green because my dark green is almost like an emerald tone and i want a darker nature kind of tone i take my watercolor brush with barely any water on the tip i tap it on a piece of napkin to make sure it's not soaking wet and I use diagonal brush strokes following the mountain slopes. You can either do the brighter parts first and then do all of the tiny black lines for the valleys or do it the opposite way. It doesn't really matter for this kind of technique because you're not going to blend it all together like usually we do for the skies going right, left, left, right. No, here we are following the direction of the mountain. So it's going to help make this a slight bit easier. Then again, with a very damp brush, I just blend the left side of that mountain. Once everything has tried, I just like to take my time with this kind of layering style to make sure everything is perfectly dry. Otherwise, when you go with a work or a pencil or a wet background, it makes a very harsh line that is very difficult to activate, to paint over it. It's very difficult to erase. So just take your time and leave it to air dry. Or alternatively, since we're using barely any water for this, you can use a, a hair dryer as well. Just medium settings, 10 to 15 seconds, and you should be good to go. Now, again, for the next mountain I outline the shadow part, I color it rather darkly with my dark green and a bit of black to the very top of the mountain and then I bring it down with my watercolor brush. I take yellow ochre and I paint the right side of it. 
because that's again where the sunlight comes and I want that to be very light and we will be adding more details once I finish painting all of the mountain we will go back and add more details so don't worry if you skip a line if it bleeds into the green don't worry we will do a second layer just with the details once we finish this Again, I outlined the shadowy part of my mountain with my dark colors here. I'm just using some black. I'm going to go with dark green over it in a bit. I also like to use bits of my brighter green, the more olivey tone, just to make it all more cohesive because if let's say you use one green for your top mountain, then a different green for your second mountain, and a different green for your third one, it's going to look very off. The more colors you keep adding to a painting, the more it loses its balance. I always suggest to use a limited number of pencils, a limited number of paints whenever you're doing a painting. It instantly makes it look much better. Personally, I like to pick four, five, maybe six pencils before start painting. Just select my palette and those are the ones I stick to. I either just pull them out of the box or just slightly lift them so I know which they are. And now back to us, again you wait for the mountain to air dry or use a hair dryer, outline the shadowy part, I like using black for this, go over it with the green so it's not just straight black, and for the highlighted area I like using yellow ochre with a bit of light green, and later I will add in some more details to it. For the final mountain that is closest to us, I use a good amount of yellow ochre over the right side and then layer my greens over it and I add some shadows with the black, just some diagonal lines coming from the mountain edge downwards. Then I color the left side with medium pressure using the black watercolor pencil. Then I'll go over it with some green just like I have throughout this whole painting. I activate it with my brush, it does not matter if you go from your lighter bits first and then do the darker ones or vice versa, just remember to always clean your brush when you switch from a light area to a darker one as to avoid contamination. And once everything is dried, I take my black pencil and every time there's a little zigzag in the mountain edge, I just pull a line going downwards you can add them towards the palm of the mountain as well, make them as short or as long as you like. It does not really matter, but this is just a very, very easy way to make it look more realistic without actually putting in the effort. Then I switch to my dark green pencil and I keep on adding some more slopes to the mountain this far up in the distance. Again, I switch to the black and I add slopes to the left side of the mountain that is in the shadow, more slopes with medium to hard pressure, so we can really see the lines because we already painted in black, but since we uh, diluted it downwards, making tiny gradients, you can still notice these little valleys. I like to give a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters for the month of September. If you end up trying out this tutorial, let me know down in the comments. You can tag me at Instagram. Thank you all for watching and we'll see each other in the next tutorial. Bye bye!